All right, so this is fight 275. Um, it was for WBC world title against Elisabetta Salinas, who's from Italy, um, and took place in Hua Hin, Thailand. And this is a 100 pound minimum weight title. So that's Elisabetta right there. Um, she actually had a European WBC title and the Italian WBC title at this weight coming into this fight. Um, so impressive. She has, uh, she has some hardware coming into this. Um, this actually is not my first world title fight. I have two IPCC world titles, neither of which are at my actual weight. They're um, 108 and 112 pounds, and I'm 100 pounds. So this was the first time fighting for a world title at my actual weight, um, and the first time in years <laughs> fighting at my actual weight uh, without a huge size disadvantage. Um, I was excited to be fighting for a WBC title. WBC is a very good, solid organization. Um, we did a uh, kind of meeting before this fight talking about the rules that were particular to uh, fighting in Thailand as well as what the WBC was bringing in. And something that I really appreciate about the WBC is that they, they pay great attention and give authority to Thailand's Muay Thai and how uh, Muay Thai is fought in Thailand. These were not all fantastic things. Um, some things about this are like how you're allowed to wrap your hands um, and which, you know, uh, which rule sets are being used. Um, but also because it's Thailand, uh, if we had fought abroad, uh, even as women, we could have had three minute rounds, uh, three five minute rounds. But because we're in Thailand, the rule set is uh, women can only fight two minute five rounds. So because we're in Thailand, uh, this was two minutes uh, five rounds. This, uh, <laughs> this announcer is really good. He, he vacillates between uh, English and Thai really quickly. He's very fluent. And uh, at, the, uh, at the rehearsal that we had done on the same day, we like, did a whole walkthrough of everything. And uh, we went into the ring, and um, you know, he does his whole announcement of where Sylvie comes from, where Elisabetta comes from. And uh, he had said, so who wants to win this fight? <laughs> and I threw my hand up, and so they put the belt on me at rehearsal. Uh, which was an excellent feeling for sure. Um, and I felt <laughs> not guilty, but I was definitely aware of the fact that me being fluent in uh, English and also being able to speak Thai allowed me this privilege of being able to understand what was being said at that moment that um, Elisabetta really just had this like processing time <laughs> difference uh, in being able to take advantage of that. Um, my friend Emma, who's responsible for Under the Ropes, is the one filming. She was using our GoPro for this, so thank you to Emma for doing a fantastic job filming this fight. Um, and Karahat was in my corner. Karahat's my hero, in case you guys are very new to me <laughs> and don't know how much I love Karahat. Um, he was in my corner for this. He's an amazing corner man. Um, his energy's great. He's very good at um, kind of bringing his energy and his expertise into these fights which I really appreciate, but something kind of odd about this is I have a very hard time hearing him and understanding him when I'm in the ring. Um, so it wasn't actually until watching this video back, like watching uh, now on this video that I'm able to actually hear what Karahat was telling me to do during the fight because I can't actually hear him during the fight. So uh, that was interesting to see after the fact and being like, oh, that's what he was saying. <laughs> but it's, it's not that different from what he tells me usually. So um, at least I wasn't completely off. Uh, the WBC put up on their Instagram page a clip of me doing my Ram Moy here. Elisabetta doesn't do one. Um, she did seal the ring, and I think she did the Y crew, but she doesn't have a Ram Moy. And uh, someone in the comments on WBC was like, this is bullshit, she doesn't even look Thai. <laughs> so uh, in case you don't know this, you don't have to be Thai to do a Ram Moy. Uh, you don't have to be Thai to respect your teachers and trainers and use the methods of Thailand and Thailand's Muay Thai in order to do that, uh, to give that honor. My Ramoy comes from my first Ajahn uh, Master K in America. Um, he's in his 80s now. When I met him, he was about to turn 70. And uh, just an amazing, incredible person. I still think about him every time I'm in the ring doing my Y crew and Ramoy. So that makes me happy thinking about Master K in this moment, fighting for a world title at my actual weight, <laughs> which <laughs> is something that I don't think that he or I would ever have imagined uh, at the time when I was training in his basement in New Jersey so many years ago. This was a very cool atmosphere down here in Hua Hin. Um, this 
event had a number of WBC titles on it. It was six fights, um, and I think there were three new titles going off. Um, and the, uh, the officials, after you wrap your hands, you have to go have them checked by an official, and they put the gloves on you and tape it to make sure that you're not you know, adding anything to it. And um, Carhot brought me over and uh, was talking to the guy who uh, was checking my gloves and, and putting everything on. And I speak Thai, so I could hear what was being said, even though I wasn't uh, adding anything to it. And he was like, oh, who are your judges for this? And he's like, oh, OK, that guy's from Channel 7. He likes Moy Cow, or like, <laughs> this guy really likes this, or something like that. So it was, it was cool to be able to hear how they know who these different officials are and what their kind of um, eyes are like for certain fights. So I'd seen, I'd seen some clips of Elisabetta fighting before. She's femur. She has a really nice, beautiful, balanced style. I had anticipated uh, teeps coming from her, although in the two or three fights that I was able to find of hers, she didn't fight the same against these different opponents, so I knew not to be like stuck on what I saw. So I basically was preparing for her to teep me quite a lot, and I knew that I wanted to kind of stay closer um, I started out pretty slow in this first round. And so my distance is just kind of off right here, which I'm not super worried about. It's a five round fight. And you can see elizabeth has got really nice movement, the way that she's kind of cutting angles. She's trying to attack my legs a little bit. She throws that teep, which I'm anticipating, and I've been able to kind of nullify it. Carhat is like, don't worry about it. <laughs> Anytime I get hit with something, he's like, my panai, like, don't think about it, don't worry about it, just keep going. Got a nice kick in there. I don't actually feel that I kick very much, but I was happy to be throwing that. I had this, like, cross block that was coming out, this kind of, like, Dracula guard um, that must just come from sparring with Yodkun Pan a lot, that it's become kind of automatic. I wasn't really thinking about it. A little bit short on my teeps there, um, but that's because of my distance in this first round. You can see Elizabeth is very busy, like she's, she's throwing kind of small interrupting shots, kind of classic femur here. I do finally grab her here against the ropes, and this is when I felt at the very end of this round like, oh, this is what my clinch is going to feel like against her. It got broken because we were against the ropes, but it wasn't broken overly fast, I don't feel. You can see she's got these little like inside shots. She's starting to throw elbows already a little bit. Um, in terms of fighters who have tape on them, I have a lot of tape, <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure her team watched a lot of my fights and, and came up with a game plan, and actually she had a very, very good game plan for me. So here Emma is trying to help uh, Karahat get the water. Uh, he's just working by himself in the corner there. All right, round two. So because this is a championship fight, they actually hand in the score every round. So uh, it might still have narrative scoring structure. Um, the WBC kind of implied that it still does. Um, but because they hand in a score every round, I wasn't sure whether they would do the kind of like 10-10 for rounds one and two. I would give that first round to Elisabetta. Here we have more of a clinch lineup, and she has this beautiful little turn that in her fights that I've seen in Europe, when she turned these girls, they just went flying. And with me, I kind of, I went with her. So I think that she's not experienced my kind of clinching before. Nice head kick from her there. Now my teep is starting to land. My distance is much better in this round. Um, I'm a little bit more focused on coming in and trying to grab her, or at least being at this better distance. When I do grab her, um, Karha's yelling for me to knee. I'm getting a little bit tangled because we're so close to the ropes. Um, but I was comfortable at this range with her. It was so weird for me to be fighting someone actually my own size. I don't even train with people my own size, so it's kind of a weird like body mapping thing. There we go. So she starts throwing these elbows. Her, uh, <laughs> I can hear her corner. I can't hear Cara. <laughs> but I think that I'm already bleeding. She cut me actually right behind, like right above this ear. And I think it was that axe elbow that she threw right there. So round two, Sylvie's bleeding. Game plan of elbowing Sylvie is good game plan. She's moving a lot. Like she really attempting a spinning elbow that I wasn't moving quite fast enough for that to have the effect that it should have had, but um, the right time to throw it. She's correct on uh, 
how to use that technique, which not everyone is. Some people try to do it coming forward. Now her teeth is kind of bouncing me a little bit. That was a nice attempt at a trip right there. Digging my knee in a little bit. I'm getting these kind of like uh, knees in the clinch that are a little bit more dynamic. You can see she's tiring out a little bit in that round. Um, she's still very active, but the, the power on everything she's doing is coming down a little bit as I experienced it in the ring. Now round three, I'm cutting her off a lot more. I'm trying to stay a lot closer because now these are scoring rounds. I would actually give both round one and two to Elisabetta. Um, so because we're on the ropes is why that's getting broken. I didn't feel like they broke the clinch too much in this fight. Now I'm starting to grab her a lot faster. A nice little trip here, put her on the ground. This I feel changed her energy and dynamic when I put her on the ground right there. She just, I don't know if it made her more tired to have to get up off the ground, but she just had a different quality um, after that trip. You can see she has really nice femur movement. She's trying to grab my kick there, which uh, didn't quite get. She trips me against the ropes here. I haven't been tripped in a really long time. <laughs> That was a really, that was a good trip on her part. So we're one and one in this round for uh, going to the ground. She's trying to nail me with that right elbow again, which is a good idea. She cut me with that before, but I have this uh, Dracula guard and I'm actually able to hook around the back of her head with my left. So I'm able to grab her. She's trying to trip me again right here. She has these good trips that again, when she was fighting in Europe, they worked every single time. Like I think that uh, me not going down was probably something that she wasn't um, anticipating. So I tried to do like a long swan uppercut there and uh, Carhat is yelling for me to knee left. Now it's two to one on these trips. The reason uh, Carhat would be yelling for me to knee left is that it's more of an open side. <laughs> tried to do a backwards donkey kick there. I like that as she's getting tired, she's trying to add flair to what she's doing. As a femur fighter, this is totally, totally an acceptable way to do things. That backwards elbow is beautiful actually, but I just kind of pushed it this way. Um, because it was from too far away so I could see it. And now she's caught sideways and I'm landing these really big knees here. These are really, really big points. And that's the end of round three. So I ended round three, which I think was already kind of on my side because of these trips and my knees were better. I, I finished it with that really, really strong uh, knees against the rope. So I was feeling good at this point uh, that I had taken the scoring round at this point. But again, I, because they hand in the score every round, it's two to one, uh, according to my brain. So here she's trying to keep me off of her more because I'm closing the distance faster. Um, but I think because she's tiring out a little bit, even though she's incredibly active, it's just much less visibly effective. Um, I'm kind of walking through what she has now, which earlier I was bouncing off of her and now uh, it looks way less effective. That was a good hook on my part. But every time I get her, like every time I close her out, not right there, as I'm trying to say every time. That got split, but when I grab her, um, I'm usually able to score some pretty big points. That was a kick for kick, which I'm a little bit proud of, just because I don't kick very much, but I'm throwing them. They're coming out. Uh, Carha's yelling for me to teep as I come in and close this distance to kind of off balance her. Got a hook and a cross in there there. So you can see she's very active, but she's kind of not landing what she was before. And here's another of those like spin, spin where I get the last little trip in. She tried to kick really hard on that one. That was a good idea. You can see how active she is. It's very exhausting to kick this much. I'm a Muay Cow fighter. We use a lot of energy. When I have to kick a lot in my training, kicking is really exhausting. Like I'm very impressed. <laughs> Had a little bit of a... <laughs> pistol whip elbow there against the ropes and now she's bent over and I'm trying to knee up kind of near her solar plexus and face. Carhat's telling me to get in there so like not to back out after having a dominant moment against the ropes there. I'm trying to jump through space a little bit. I think I just threw another elbow there. That's a big knee. Failure to trip. These are some like folding knees. <sighs> so there's another trip of me. The ref warns her about hooking the leg. I've watched that trip a number of times. I'm not entirely sure where she was hooking my leg, but it's what he saw. Again, ending round four with this really dominant move against this <laughs> same spot in the ropes. I think also I took round four. So if I'm the, the judge, 
I have us two to two at this moment, so it still comes down to round five, um, which is a dangerous place to be in when you're fighting for a world title to have to win it in the fifth round. But uh, as I'm scoring it, we're two to two, which means both of us have to win this round in order to win the fight. You can see Elisabetta is uh, backing me up a little bit. Her game plan for me actually was really, really good. It's just I'm a little bit of a tank um, because I've fought bigger so much that like I'm just not affected by things that I think would affect someone our same size that she was fighting in Europe or something like this. It's just in Thai you call it bones. That was a beautiful teep up high trying to get to my face. So here she's trying to be very busy, like she's trying to knee quickly, but they're not really um, strong. She, I just took her back there. She kind of like tried to do a, I don't know, a hip turn or something, and she kind of turned her back into me. So it's a pretty dominant moment. And here I put her down again. I laugh every time referees like yank me off of people, they grab me by the hips and they lift me. And because I'm small, I actually get kind of like pulled off the ground a little bit. There we go, little buckle. <laughs> Emma was just like nice. <laughs> I'm happy to have caught that. So again, Karhat yelling, knee to the left, knee left. Here I am buckling her. This in Thai is called uh, Roop. Roop is like your composure. It's literally your image. And I'm breaking her Roop which is a huge point. I did my own spinning elbow for the first time here and didn't land it, but it was close-ish. She came back with her same one, trying to get me back with the same thing, which is good. And now she's trying to do these same trips, these low kind of like pinning the leg trips, which are really good turns, but she doesn't have the power. I backed up off of her and you can see her face there. She is just totally exhausted. I have a friend who's not familiar with Muay Thai. And when she saw that part in my fight where she was like, that was incredible when you had gotten her into such a terrible position and then you backed off. Like she didn't know how to interpret this. She was like, this was so surprising. And to me, I wasn't like making a calculated point about being Thai. This is, I've just fought in Thailand for a really long time. And when you're winning, there's a little bit of a kind of um, meta, like it's not mercy, but it's something like this where you're like, this is enough. Like I don't, I don't have to knock you out. Uh, maybe I should have because it's a, it's a world title fight and you don't know how people are scoring. So maybe I should have really gone in that moment and really like finalized, put the seal on that to make sure uh, against all possibilities of how they might score. Um, again, I wasn't thinking about it. It was not a conscious thought. It was kind of a like, this is the um, automatic flow of my feelings of what I've done in this fight already. What's happening in this moment. It's the end of round five and pulling back to be like, now you come get me was to me, uh, the correct way to do it in that it felt natural. It felt like like the automatic thing to do. I hadn't I hadn't thought about it. So <laughs> I haven't been in this position very often either. Uh, the way you fight in Thailand, uh, they don't read the scores a lot in like many, many fights. They're starting to do it now. There are a lot more fights like on TV that are being done in different formats where they'll kind of make you come to the center and they'll read off the scores, even if it's kind of obvious who won. I'm not used to this. The way that I fight, you kind of come in and get out really fast. Um, you only read the scores if it's an important fight, like if it's for a title or something like that. So I don't have tons of experience of this waiting in the middle of the ring for the scores to be read. <laughs> I, was, I was very confident that I'd won the fight um, as evidenced by how I finished that fight. Um, but as we stood there even longer and it was taking longer to calculate the, the tabulate the scores. I was becoming more like, what if I fucked up? <laughs> what if this is not what I thought it was? Unanimous decision. When they said unanimous decision, I was like, that's me. I won this fight. Okay. <laughs> so I had gotten to visualize this earlier through the walkthrough in, in my privilege of speaking English and being able to uh, raise my hand and have them put the belt on me. Elisabetta is very sweet. Um, she came and saw me after the fight. We took a photo together. Um, this is called a, a minimum weight title, which is 100 pounds. And the minimum weight uh, category existed, but it wasn't filled. So this was a vacant minimum weight title um, that I was able to take home here. And they gave me the belt. <laughs> like, I, I didn't think they were going to give it to me because I've never gotten to keep a belt that I've won before ever. Um, and so when Karahat put it in a case and brought it back to the green room, I'm like, are you stealing the belt? And he's like, no, you get to take it. He's like, they said you get to take it. And I honestly, I didn't believe Karahat, which I feel slightly bad about. I had him look at my cut 
And I was like, does this need stitches? And he's like, no, no, it's fine. And we went home to the hotel and it would not stop bleeding. I was getting blood everywhere and it just would not stop. So I had Kevin look at it and he's like, you need like six stitches. <laughs> so we went to the hospital and the next day I'm like, hey, Karaha, you told me I don't need stitches and I totally had to go get six stitches. <laughs> And that's when he told me that he's actually disgusted by blood. Like he doesn't like looking at cuts in blood, which is amazing because he cuts so many of his opponents. But so basically when I asked him, does this need stitches? Karahat was like, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so I'll check myself next time. Hey, I am in Hua Hin and we are walking away from the amazing Muay Thai festival. Today was the uh, professional day. They have like an amateur tournament going on. Today was professional, WBC belts were going off. This was my 275th fight. Emma came down to help, which is amazing. Carhat was in my corner. Kevin's here as always. I fought Elisabetta Salinas from uh, Italy. And um, yeah, so this was for the minimum weight WBC world title, which as you can hear in the title, it is for the minimum weight, which is hundred pounds. But I'm really grateful that they have a new weight class that's actually much closer to um, what I should be fighting at. It's kind of more or less near my walk around weight, which is amazing. Um, for those of you who see these post fight updates in order to get the results, I won. So you are now looking at the minimum weight world champion of the WBC. That is Sylvie Von Douglas Itu. <laughs> the announcer said that he had to go search through tons of videos online to see me announcing my own last name so he knew how to pronounce it. So if anyone needs to pronounce my name in the future, it's Sylvie Von Douglas Itu. The double U's make an ooh sound. Thank you so much to Emma for coming down and helping. I haven't seen Emma in a really long time. She's a dear friend. She is an amazing energy to have in the corner and I adore her. And uh, Karha in my corner, when I win, <laughs> when I win a world title is really awesome. Thank you to everyone who helped put on this event, the amazing Muay Thai Festival in Hua Hin. This is the first uh, and hopefully there will be an annual thing of many. And uh, I feel pretty good. I have a little bit of a cut, but we didn't sew it or anything, stitch it. So uh, if I wake up, can't sleep, I'm gonna go train with Kem on the beach tomorrow morning. Uh, so yeah, thank you to all my sponsors and supporters and everyone who watched. Uh, thank you to people who bought the pay-per-view to watch this live. I know my family was watching. Um, and yeah, for those of you who weren't able to watch it, uh, hopefully we'll be able to show it to you. And uh, thank you so much everyone who allows me to do this. Fight 275 in the books.